Remember that video of Obama shooting a marshmallow out of an air cannon at the White House? That technology basically works the same way as those tubes at the bank drive through that shoot money at you, or nail guns that shoot nails at you. Not at you. At wood. Those and other awesome machines are brought to you by the principles of pneumatics, which use the potential energy of compressed gas to do work. Since air is cheap, plentiful, and non-toxic, a lot of machines use pneumatics by simply pressurizing air and then letting it loose to move a bank canister, or a nail, or a marshmallow. It's also the same technology that lets me fire this little chunk of apple at you. Oh. That same thing, of course, is actually better to do with a potato, but we only had an apple lying around the office. And YouTube is, of course, full to the top with videos about how to make potato guns or even potato cannons. But I'm not about to start you off on a path that involves a can of hairspray and a lighter. You can put an eye out. In order to make this humble potato slash apple shooter and demonstrate pneumatics safely in your own home, all you need is a ballpoint pen and an apple or potato. You just take the righty part of the pen out of the pen and remove the cylinder thing and take the cap off and then you shove it into your potato. And do it like that. Pull it out, try and get your hunk like a nice seal on one end, and then stick it in the other side. You can use this thing as your plunger, and you just shoot it. It's not the most exciting thing we've ever done at SciShow, but the principles at work in the little shooter are the same as in all pneumatic devices, and in order to understand them, you first have to understand the properties of gases. Gases, technically, are fluids. Substances that reshape themselves to whatever container they're in, and there are lots of laws that dictate how fluids work here on Earth. For starters, there's Pascal's Law, which says that when there's any increase in pressure, that is, the amount of force being applied to a particular area, at any point in a contained fluid, an equal increase in pressure is exerted at every other point in the container. Blaise Pascal, a French mathematician, figured this out in 1646 by pouring water down a pipe into a wooden barrel that was already full. Instead of the water just running up out of the top of the pipe, as you might expect, the barrel exploded. The weight of the water being poured in increased the pressure on all sides of the barrel, leading to a kablammo. So in our apple shooter, when I push on the chunk of apple, the gas between the two chunks is exerting the same amount of pressure on both of them, as well as on the walls of the cylinder. Anything within this contained system is experiencing the same amount of pressure. But why does pushing on it create more pressure in the first place? Well, that's where another important law comes in, the ideal gas law. This states that the amount of pressure and volume of a gas have an inverse relation relationship. As the volume of a gas goes down, the pressure goes up, and vice versa. This is only true as long as the temperature of the gas remains constant, by the way, since temperature, volume, and pressure of a gas all factor into a gas's state at any given time. So when I decrease the volume of the air in the cylinder by pushing the plunger in, I'm creating more pressure inside it. Now if I want, I can push the plunger in only partway and then stop. Once the air is compressed, it has potential energy to do work. But as I keep compressing the air, the pressure gets even higher, and at this point the only thing keeping the other apple chunk in the cylinder is friction. Once the force of the pressure becomes greater than the friction, that chunk starts moving, and the more it moves, the more friction drops until it's airborne. So yes, simple, but also pretty awesome physics can be, like this apple, easier to digest in small portions. Thank you for watching this SciShow experiment. If you have an experiment or demonstration that you'd like to see us do, let us know in the comments below. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. And if you want to keep getting smarter with us here at SciShow, you can go to youtube.com slash SciShow and subscribe.